So yeah, we want, we are, we're encouraging like community leaders to talk to their neighbors, talk to their friends. Uh, we're talking with people in the community uh, from all over because we know there's a whole host of issues. Um, and if we could get people advocating and letting the government, letting these agencies know that mold is a problem, temporary housing is a problem. Um, there's a lot of small businesses that don't have access to these S the small business association loans, mm -hmm. um, either because they're too small or because they have bad credit, um, or they don't want to take out another loan because they've already been hit so hard and business yeah. is already struggling as it is. Um, so we need to figure out how we can find all these avenues to like source resources to continue yeah. to meet the sort of ongoing needs, but do it in a way that gives people the power to be able to advocate for themselves. Right. These small businesses need immediate assistance now. They need a bailout. Yeah. You know? So talk about that. Like we bailed out who do we bail out? Yeah, I mean we yeah. We, where are they? Yeah, we bailed out trillions of dollars the um, large banks, but while these small business owners are over leveraged to the hilt, they're over mortgaged, they're they can't get loans. They need assistance now, and loans are good for some businesses, but loans aren't good for all businesses. You know. So like. Yeah, and the other issue that small business owners face in these in these communities is that the um, their customer base has been severely impacted. Their customer base can't make their bills, can't make their mortgages, can't pay their rent. So their ability, their spending power has is severely limited as well. You know? So what do you what do you think is a small piece of that? A small solution, like a small piece of the solution. A small piece of that solution is to encourage uh, volunteers who come to these communities to like frequent local businesses to like spend their money at some of these local places. Um, if people are trying to source uh, materials for clean out, try and encourage them to use local businesses instead of big box stores so that, so that we can keep this community on the block so that dollar can continue to turn over again and again in the community. Um, and we need folks who can, can help with um, grants or like small, um, no uh, strings attached money just to get some of these folks kind of up on their feet uh, going again, you know, the way, the way they help uh, other folks. So I talked to one small business owner who's like, he doesn't want to have to fire two of his employees, but he, his stock, his inventory was decimated at a small bodega. He can't pay them, and these are family members who work for him, Yeah. you know, and so it's people like that that need help. Does this um, disaster remind you of Katrina? What What are the similarities? What are the differences? Um, it's a lot of the same similarities. Um, the The biggest difference is the water sat for a lot longer in certain places down there. But the similarities are the smell. The smell of the moldy homes is even the same here as it was there. Like there's something about water when it sits and it's filled with grime and dirt. It just it smells the same. I go I walk into a moldy house and I like I'm you know almost passing out. And meanwhile, there's toddlers crawling around. I've been dealing with this for over a month, you know? And that was the same situation in New Orleans. Yeah, and so what is FEMA offering? They're offering hotel vouchers when the hotels, there's like a waiting list of like two weeks just to get in. Yeah, FEMA is offering hotel vouchers. What we're experiencing from people is that they can't even get into those hotels because those hotels are booked uh, by relief workers who are coming in. And then the, the mayor's office said that they're, they uh, apparently on their website, they have a way to like access room blocks. But People barely have electricity, let alone internet, and a lot of these communities didn't even have internet to begin with. So wait a minute. So you're saying that volunteers are getting priority over residents to take these hotels? I don't know if they're getting priority, but I know that there are there. I've we've talked to people who have tried to use hotel vouchers and weren't able to because the hotels were were booked uh, by um, not necessarily tourists, but by uh, relief workers from Red Cross or wherever these folks were coming from, large agencies. And also these places, like these communities, Coney Island, Staten Island, um, Rockaways, are an hour and a half at best from Manhattan. So you're, 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 you're destroying the fabric of the community when people are staying in these hotels that are far away. And not only are these hotels far away, but they're in neighborhoods where there aren't op food options that people can afford. I was Bloomberg, and you would say something to him right now, off the cuff, what would you say? The first thing I would say is that you need to tell OEM, to tell the feds to bring in temporary housing. New York City is not taking care of this problem, and we need to figure out this problem immediately. Why isn't New York City fi figuring out this problem? Why do we have to go to the federal government? The, f uh, the federal government has money as well as like the capacity to set up emergency temporary shelters, but there are currently none of those set up in New York. And there's a lot of bl name 
name-calling and blaming going on where the, gov the, the city is blaming the feds and the feds are blaming the city. I don't know what the problem is, but someone who's as sort of like sophisticated a technocrat as Bloomberg is, is somebody who I know knows how to figure this out. There's a will issue going on where someone's choosing not to because they're choosing to do other resources. What they're saying is that they're saying that they want people to stay in their homes because they want to keep people in homes. They don't want to put them in temporary uh, shelters, but there's no temporary shelters for people to go to so they can even clean their homes. So they're encouraging people to stay in their homes, which are like basically a health hazard just to stay in them. Yeah, there's a looming health crisis that we're, we're walking into. Yeah, and at that meeting the other night, the Department of Health spokeswoman um, was saying that the air quality is fine. What yeah. do you say to that? What I would say to that is that anyone who says the air quality is fine needs to spend a night in one of these moldy homes and develop what you know is called the Rockaway cough, you know. Yeah. And then we'll see how how really fine it is. Our friend Renee uh, was in a house today and she saw mold that was so alive it was fuzzy. You know, it looked like something having left in your fridge for a month. So it's bad. It's it's really really bad. You know. And, and so that mold gets in your lungs, right? Yeah, you breathe you breathe that in, and then it, it continues to grow in your in your lungs and in your system. And so imagine toddlers. Imagine a small child crawling around in that moldy environment. That child may not necessarily be affected today or tomorrow, but in a month, they're gonna feel it. In two months, they're gonna feel it. In five years, maybe, because that's that these children are at critical stages of their development. So that mold has to have some type of negative effect. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for all your work, and thanks for talking to me. Thank you. Sure. The world is full of bloombirds. <laughs> We're actually